Examination of Respiratory System, a quick review. Examination of respiratory system starts with an elaborate and detailed history taking. A good history taking indicates towards the diagnosis in almost 90% of cases. Good history taking. It begins with name, age, sex, residence, marital status and most importantly occupation. It is most important because there are many occupational lung diseases, mimicking common respiratory diseases, like TB, COPD etc. Simply asking the name of the trade, may not be sufficient because, occupationally related lung diseases, may appear, after a very long exposure, in that particular work. Ask. 1. What exactly he does, whether he is a blue-collar man, sitting in AC, or working in field, getting exposed to dust, cement, fumes etc. 2. The duration, longer the exposure, more severe the lung damage. 3. Ask about, changed jobs. Doing same job for 4 to 5 year, shall expose him, to related adverse effects of the job. 4. Know the occupation of other family members. Some family member working in asbestos factory, may bring the asbestos fibers to the house. It may cause asbestosis in very closely associated family member. After general interrogation, ask about the chief complaints. Ask with what problem he has come to you, and the duration. With duration means, you have to arrange the chief complaints, in the chronological order, as if you are building a story. Patient may say, I am ill just for two days. You may have to ask repeatedly, to ascertain the exact duration of his illness, say, more than two years. The symptoms in respiratory diseases, are of two types. One group of symptoms, which are extrapulmonary or extrathoracic symptoms. Two pulmonary symptoms, directly related to respiratory system. Respiratory symptoms. Cardinal symptoms of respiratory disorders are cough, expectoration, hemoptysis, or expectoration of blood, chest pain, breathlessness and wheezing. Cough. It may be dry or productive. Dry cough generally is due to smoking, UTI, sinusitis, early stages of TB, COPD, and tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, etc. Productive cough with expectorations, and generally subacute or chronic, indicates, TB with secondary infection, COPD, lung abscess, bronchiectasis. Acute onset cough may be due to, UTI, allergy, congestive heart failure, or foreign body inhalation. Chronic cough is usually more than three weeks old, and may be due to asthma, TB, malignancy, suppurative lung diseases like lung abscess, empyema etc. Ask if it occurs in paroxysms as in cardiac or asthma. Inquire cough onset, duration, productive, variations in relation to posture, which may indicate side of disease, associated pain, usually due to pleurisy. Expectoration. Ask quantity in 24 hours, it is more than 50 ml, in suppurative conditions like bronchiectasis, lung abscess, and carcinoma. Quality, it may be mucoid, mucopurulent, or purulent, differentiated by color, and consistency. Check if mixed with blood streaks. Odor, foul smelling, indicates anaerobic infection. Postural, Expectoration is more on lying on the side of the disease. Hemoptysis, or expectoration of blood. Usually it is from A. Pulmonary 1. Bronchial, bronchiectasis, tumors, foreign bodies 2. Lung parenchyma, TB, abscess 3. Pulmonary vascular diseases like pulmonary hypertension 
SLE. B. Cardiac mitral stenosis, congestive failure. C. Bleeding disorders. Leukemia or purpura, use of anticoagulants. Hemoptysis should be differentiated from pseudohemoptysis, as in bleeding from gums and hematemesis or blood vomiting, where the blood is altered and may be mixed with food particles, whereas blood in hemoptysis is generally frank red because of air mixed. Ask for onset, duration, quantity, quality like color or mixed with sputum, associated symptoms or diseases, history of bleeding from elsewhere and any history of taking anticoagulants. Chest pain. Causes. A thoracic or chest wall pains are usually localized, continuous. Often associated with local tenderness and are superficial or deep. They may originate from. 1. Diseases of skin and subcutaneous tissues. 2. Muscles myalgia. 3. Affection of nerves, herpes zoster, neuralgias. 4. Diseases of bones and joints, costochondritis. B. Intrathoracic chest pain may be due to. 1. Diseases of the heart, aorta, cardiac chest pain is generally, central or precordial, radiating, and related to exertion. 2. Diseases of the respiratory system pleurisy, pneumothorax, acute pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, lung abscess, malignancies. 3. Mediastinal chest pain, is central and dull aching, and due to growth, emphysema, gastroesophageal reflux. Respiratory chest pain is usually plural, more on coughing, sneezing, laughing etc. Infective lung diseases, malignancies may also cause chest pain on that side. C. Extrathoracic causes, like abdominal or spinal diseases. D. Psychogenic causes. When a patient complains of chest pain the following information should be obtained about it. 1. Situation. 2. Severity. 3. Duration. 4. Whether constant or intermittent. 5. Nature and circumstances of onset. For example, whether sudden or gradual, whether accompanied by other respiratory symptoms such as cough or dyspnea. And. 6. Whether related to breathing coughing, sneezing, spinal movements or exertion. 7. Radiation Breathlessness. It is classified as A. Grating, as mild, breathlessness on exertion, moderate, breathlessness on ordinary activity, considerable, breathlessness incapacitating, and severe, breathlessness even at rest or be according to onset or cause acute or sudden onset occur in asthma pneumothorax foreign body inhalation subacute takes weeks to develop and occur in anemia pregnancy obesity pleural effusion with fever cancer subacute occlusion of bronchus ild chronic which develop and persist for months and years indicate pneumoconiosis, COPD, or fibrosis of any origin. C. According to origin, breathlessness may be respiratory, cardiac, metabolic as in diabetes, or acidosis, and psychological, or neurological origin, as in cerebrovascular episodes, or brain diseases. Ask, onset, duration, progress, periodic or recurrent, associated symptoms like fever, other associated diseases like hypertension, relation to posture, as in orthopnea, or dyspnea on lying. Wheezing is a high-pitched whistling sound, made while breathing. It is indicative of partial airway obstruction. Extrathoracic symptoms One general symptoms, like fever, loss of weight. Two second group of symptoms are in relation to right-sided heart failure like swelling over face and feet. They may come with early symptoms in relation to corpulmenal. 
It is the right-sided heart failure secondary to lung diseases. It is usually associated with breathlessness. Three third group of extra respiratory symptoms are due to hypoxia, decrease in blood oxygen, or hypercapnia, that is increase in the carbon dioxide. Here patient may have incoherence and confusion with changed personality. Patient may have increasing breathlessness and even may become semi-comatose. They may sometimes become aggressive. Four extrathoracic manifestation of lung cancer. Metastatic manifestation of lung cancer may occur into brain, liver, and bone. Patients may land up in orthopedic, neurology or gastroenterology OPDs. Non-metastatic manifestations of cancer or perineoplastic syndrome may be due to various hormone-like chemicals secreted by cancer cells and manifest as various neuropathies, myopathies, various endocrinal disorders. 5. Clubbing swelling below the nail margin is an important extrathoracic symptom or sign. It is also known as hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. Clubbing, usually associated with pain in lower end, of bones wrist and ankle joints. Periosteal new bone formation. History of present illness. Record in detail every symptom, concise and chronologically as they progressed, and in patient's word. Inquire the mode of onset, that is sudden or gradual, their duration, and how one symptom progressed into another. Find out whether there are any variations in relation to physical activities, diurnal or seasonal variations, and intermittent symptom-free periods. Ask for any aggravating or relieving factors. Note down important negative points also regarding presenting complaints. Past history. Ask the details of patient's past, starting just before the present history. What happened before present illness since birth? Ask for history of any disease or trauma, drowning etc. Which may be linked to present illness, like diabetes, hypertension, other chronic diseases. Whether he had any glandular disease, or rashes in childhood. Patients do not voluntary these information unlike in West. Know the treatments received in past. Ask chronic diseases, like similar illness in the past, and treatment received. Trauma, especially to chest. Aspirations history important, dental extractions, infective focus, tonsillectomy, drowning, alcohol, glandular TB, allergic history, especially eczema, rhinitis, asthma, to be inquired. Find out if he had any operations, or received blood transfusions. Inquire any exanthematous fevers, measles, chicken pox, whooping cough etc. Whether he had lived in any endemic areas. History of treatment in the past. What treatment received, for which disease, and what was the response, watch for any wrong diagnosis, improper treatment, non-compliance, associated problems, drug resistance etc. Inquire about any adverse drug reactions earlier. Family history. It comprises of one who all live together, related or unrelated like roommates, friends, etc. How many persons live with the patient, sharing some personal items, like clothes, so that some diseases, might be due to, direct spread. Ask about any diseases like tuberculosis, parasitic infestations, skin diseases suffered by the persons, living with him. 2. Ask details of patient's blood relatives who may or may not be living with him. Like parents, brothers, and sister, uncles and aunts, so that any genetically predisposed diseases, if present, can be made out. Any history of consanguineous marriages is important. Include marital history with details of patient's spouse, any miscarriages, birth anomalies in family may be recorded. Any diseases in family like asthma, malignancies, hypertension, diabetes, eczema must be noted.
if possible ascertain the causes of deaths of family members. Personal history includes patients' habits like smoking, alcohol, working pattern, family life, recreations, food habits, and addictions. Smoking is of importance in respiratory illnesses. Patient may be smoking, Tourette's, cigars, BDs, hookah, etc. Ask 1. What do you smoke? 2. Duration, since how long he is smoking. Smoking index is noted as number of smoking BDs, or cigarettes per day, multiplied by number of smoking years. Or pack year is calculated by smoking years, multiplied by number of packs, containing 20 sticks per day. 3. If patient denies smoking, ask specifically whether he was smoking in the past. Alcohol history should be elicited because it can cause respiratory infections pneumonias, reduces immunity. Generally, alcoholics are unreliable to give proper history and comply with treatment. They may have liver damaged or had exposure to HIV risk factors, STD, and drug abuses. Socioeconomic history, like the way of their living or overcrowdings, along with nutritional history, should be taken. TB, asthma, and other chest infections are common in malnourished persons and do not respond well to treatment also. Moreover, it gives the physician an insight regarding the patient's ability to afford the treatment. Menstrual history should be recorded in females along with any important gynecological or obstetrics history.